on today's Prophetic Rewind. Adam and Eve have suddenly stood still. They died. He has to move them. He asked them a question, where are you? Well, can't you see? Yeah, of course he can see. He's inducing motion. But you know what prophetic praise does? It opens the heavens. God is in a good mood. Aren't we happy? Can does he ever get into bad mood? Once in a while, abortion comes before him, children crying, and nobody's praying, nobody cares, nobody's withstanding, nobody's resisting steadfastly, doesn't get happy about it. But he said something tonight, and I have to build on that because the prophetic word is never premeditated. Yet it comes out like an impulse. And it's called, actually, it's called the unaccountable impulse. And I'll explain to you in a few minutes. I just finished my prayer and preparation this afternoon. I sort of wiped my hands as if to say, well, now I've got it all put together. <laughs> and as he always does, he said, I want you to get back down there. We ain't finished yet. I said, Lord, you understand it's 6.15. This is what I sort of heard him say. He said, you don't really know what I'm going to say yet, do you? So what are you going to do? Why are you making all these notes? In preparation. Kim, you've done this for 30 years. Why are you doing it? I'm going to surprise you again. I'll tell you it all happened, yeah, when we were singing and praising and this lady over here that started walking like this, yeah. It's like God said to me, this, this woman's got something here. She, everywhere she puts her foot, the powers of hell are, are trembling. She just carried on going there. And I thought, this woman's catching my attention here. And the Spirit of the Lord says she is inviting angels. Now, you may say, I don't believe in angels, and then you are quite, quite plainly stupid. Because not only, is it in it, it, not only is it in existence as a result of our biblical stories, but because the world also acknowledges that the fact is that there are angels, and we don't care what they say, but they even know that there's some angelic presence. They don't know how to describe it. But what I clearly heard tonight was the Spirit of the Lord began to take me to the God of Elijah and back to the sound that was taking place at that time. And I distinctly heard, and I stopped for a minute when we were doing that one piece that, by the way, all of the songs were not, all the songs we did except for the first two were, 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 came by the Holy Spirit. And everything he said made sense to me but until we got to Elijah and the chariots. And I was singing that song and I suddenly was caught away for maybe a minute or two. And I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see you, I, wa I just heard this, this, uh, the violin playing and I heard the sound of the praise and I, and I suddenly just listened and I could hear, now we weren't thousands, we, it seemed like there were hundreds of thousands that were, were singing together and I realized that we were surrounded by a great cloud of witness that were joining with us in our song in hope, in expectation. I don't know what you believe in eternity and what eternity is and whether the is such a thing as waiting, but the Bible says in Hebrews that we are surrounded with, by a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, whatever they did, whatever testimony they hold, you and I have the power to do something greater than what they did. And I would suggest to you tonight that we should be embarrassed. We should be embarrassed at the tolerance of religion in our, in our schools, in our politics, in our churches, in our way of life, there should be embarrassment because of what we've tolerated. And it's all because you get a few secular humanists that tell us that we're crazy. When we actually believe that the God of the universe can show up in somebody's house. We believe that the God of the universe 
can come where two or three are gathered and turn the place upside down. We believe that. What do you? What do they think they're doing? And so what's happening is there is no more expectation. People are not expecting. And so God is waiting in anticipation for somebody to say, I'm sick of telling the story about Moses. I want to make a story as powerful, if not better. Well, Kim, don't you understand that's a holy thing? Yes, for what reason? The reason that he, it is told to us is so that we could understand that the possibility exists that we could have an encounter of such a kind and if not greater than that. Well, Kim, you, you're speaking about an entire nation, a people who were oppressed, that were brought out of Egypt. I want to show you a people that are oppressed right now in this nation that need to be brought out from that oppression under a Babylonian system. God is looking for a Moses. God is looking for such so that they may do greater. And so for that one minute I was surrounded by the sounds of, you know, I'm, my ministry is, of course, operates on the supernatural. And if there's no supernatural presence, I begin to suffocate. And it speaks of the future, bringing it into the now. But I was caught up for those two minutes or so and just heard, and it just brought tears to my eyes. Because I realized that God has surrounded us with something that is so powerful. And we are about to do something greater than what they did. Jesus said, greater works will you do in my name. Why? Because I go to the Father. Now, you've got to understand something. If he said that, I, it may not be that we do as one person what he did. But as collectively, I believe we can do so much greater than anybody that ever did anything. And we have the power to do it in his wonderful name. I want to talk to you tonight and address this because there's so much supernatural stuff going around us that I have to put in as much as I can before something bursts. Like it does. Because I anticipate the inevitable supernatural intervention of God all the time. I want to speak to you tonight about impulse. Because exactly what he spoke about, made, it's all connected because of his word and his prophetic word to us. You are about to experience something you've never experienced before. You've heard that, but you see the difference is, there is an open heaven. Things happen with a closed heaven, but without revelation. And in the presence of revelation... Sin does not have the same status as it does in the absence of revelation. You can teach historically, you can teach theologically, but if there's no revelation knowledge, if there's no revealing of God, if there is no presence that comes with your revelation, sin has the same status. Unbelief has the same status as it does in the absence of revelation. Whatever is a, a stronghold right now, will remain a stronghold as long as there is no manifestation of Christ in His Word. And what we're dealing with tonight is the fact that people are afraid to step out of the boat if you wish. So when God begins to appear, they know they're going to do, have to do something they've never done before. Because of creative revelation. Tonight... We begin to prophesy and say, as the chariots of fire and the horses of fire came to Elijah, so they are coming to us. Okay. You see, we have a lot of good stuff happening. But revelation means God revealing himself as his word is given. And when he reveals himself, the status of unbelief, sickness, infirmity, Captivity is no longer, as, does not have the same status as it does when in the absence of revelation. 
When Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, suddenly he said, woe is, is me, I am a man of unclean lips. Suddenly the status of sin was no longer in that mode. It didn't have the power that he had. He wanted to get rid of it. You can preach as much as you like, but when God reveals himself, people want to get rid of their sin. And then guess what happens next? The next thing that happens when, he, when the angel touches his, his mouth as he's touching a lot of your mouths tonight. You know what begins to happen? He has access to the conversation of the Godhead. That's right. He hears a discussion in heaven. He hears a discussion in heaven. And he hears God saying, Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah is hearing this conversation. And suddenly because of revelation, because he saw the Lord high and lifted up, as we did tonight, and because there was a revelation of God, he had access to the conversation of God. I don't know about you, but I'd really like to have access to the conversation of God. I'd like to know what he's discussing right now. I'd like to know what the subject matter is taking place right now. How many of you would like to know the subject matter that's taking place in the conversation of God? How many of you would like to take a little... I'd like to be a fly on the wall. How many of you would like to be a fly on the wall in the house of the living God? How many of you would like to get, have access to the conversation of God in this building? How many of you would like to get rid of your sin and say, from the moment that I get rid of my sin, I'm going to have access to the conversation of God. I want to tell you what, there's a spirit of Absalom that's trying to arise against the church. And the spirit of the Lord said, I'm about to hang him by his long, long hair. I'm about to take him and hang him by his neck. You see, the spirit of Absalom is whispering to the people's ears and saying, your pastors and your leaders are not doing enough for you. And God says, he's a about to lose his head he's about to be hanged on a tree so that the people of God can have the ruling King David rule again hallelujah say yes that's what I'm talking about trying to get on with it and in he comes he feels at home God inhabits the praises of His people. You know what that means? Inhabits. Makes residence in your house. Inhabits. Feels at home. Kicks His shoes off. Taps His feet. It's happening. Praise allows God to reveal Himself. The impulse of God. You know what He just said, by the way? came in here and just threw that piece of meat out about Absalom. He said, you want, what, do you want us to do? what do you want us to do? Well, I took care of it. I just want you to know he's about to hang. Because he's whispering in the ears of the people and causing dissatisfaction with their leaders, the anointed kings of this day. And he's saying, Absalom, your time has come to an end in this day. And this happens in businesses and all over. The impulse of God, or as the Bible calls it, quickening. Genesis 3 verse 6. Adam and Eve heard the sound of God. Walking. The sound is walking. That alone is weird. The other translation says they heard the voice of God walking. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the word is proceeding, advancing towards them. And when they heard the sound, they heard it in the cool of the day. Everybody say cool. cool. First of all, the sound of God is a sensation produced by stimulation, by vibrations transmitted through the air. <laughs> so if you're waiting for a Charlton Heston voice, forget it. I've heard the sound of God many times. I've heard the sound of God, and when I hear it, it is indistinguishable to start with. 
But as long as you capture the sound, it takes control of you and then begins to explain itself in actions and in your life. Things begin to happen. The voice proceeded towards me, took me over, took possession of my spirit, my soul, my mind, my body. I didn't know what happened. Something just happened. And then everything from that point becomes an action. I'm doing this. I'm going there. Why am I here? How did this happen? The car stopped there. And suddenly I meet this person. Everything begins to just fit. And then it begins to interpret itself through my life. And so we think the voice of God is going to come to us. And it's distinguishable. But it's not. You cannot distinguish it immediately. In many, in, many in many events. The sound is a sensation produced by stimulation. Everybody say stimulation. Through or by vibrations. Okay? So that's weird, Kim. No. Why do you think you shake sometimes? Transmitted through the air. Okay. It sounds all scientific, but just bear with me. My daughter Elizabeth said to me, why does thunder come and then the lightning? Or is it the other way around? Other way around, okay. I told you a little drunk here. Not quite there tonight. He hit me hard with a jug of new wine. <laughs> so I love coming here. I tried to get there three times and he turned me down. No, I'm kidding. Because we always leave with something incredible. Why is it that you have the, the, the lightning and then you hear the sound of thunder? I said, why? As if I didn't know. She told me. The speed of light moves faster than sound. And what I'm trying to get at here is, when God speaks, there is light, there is manifestation, things are seen but not always heard. It comes at the appropriate time. I've heard if, if, if this lightning's two miles away or five, or if, or, if it's, or if it's five seconds, it's five miles away or whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't really know, but I know this. God speaks. It's light. And then only later on is it heard, and it's heard at the appropriate time. Very important that you understand this, and I'm doing my best to teach as much as I can. In the hope that there won't be too much interruption because it's so beautiful that you don't feel like teaching anymore when it happens. And he's sort of brooding. Wanting to just snap on somebody any moment and just shake you and give you some... A jug of wine. I'm talking about new wine. I'm talking about stuff that will cause you to run around in, under severe emotion. See what's happening? There he goes again. How many of you want a jug of that wine tonight? Come on! How many of you want a jug of that wine tonight? Paul and Silas at midnight are praising at midnight. And suddenly... There is an earthquake that comes at the right time. God spoke that earthquake or that release thousands of years before that event. It's going to get better. Let me teach you a little more. The word cool in the Bible is the word spirit, breeze, wind. Everybody say, whirlwind. It's the word ruach, which also means unaccountable impulse. And so something happens and we, he, we, he is not accountable to us for that action. What is an impulse? An impulse is a sudden impelling action or force. 
driving forwards and inducing motion. So he looked for motionless people so he can induce motion. He looks for something that is dead so he can resurrect it. It's beautiful. But stay with me because we don't even understand that the induction of this motion comes because there is none. It is the effect of an impelling force inducing motion. God needs you to advance. God needs you to move. He doesn't want you in one place. The word cool is unaccountable impulse, whirlwind. Adam and Eve have suddenly stood still. They die. He has to move them. He asks them a question, where are you? Well, can't you see? Yeah, of course he can see. He's inducing motion. I am naked. I, I, I am, I've run away from you. It's, it's doing something. Please listen, we are entering, and I speak this prophetically, the cool of the day. And this time, this time, so help me God, we will not run away. This time, we will not see ourselves as naked. This time, we will find ourselves clothed in garments of righteousness. This time, we will see ourselves clothed in garments of praise. This time, we will not run away from the sound of God, but we will run to it so that there will be an amalgamation, so that there will be a mingling, so we can have the experience that Enoch had, because when Enoch walked to God, he was not any longer, because there was a divine amalgamation, there was a divine mixing that took place, and the two of them became one. So they were one force against the powers of hell so they could they could have dominion and so they could take over the earth which is ours everybody in this building say the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof yes it is the effect of an impelling force in the cool of the day, he was advancing. On the day of Pentecost, they were in the cool of the day. And suddenly there was a motion. He was inducing motion. The sound of a whirlwind. The sound of a wind. I've been prophesying that in the mid part of the nation, it will st start in Illinois and through that area. And then go throughout the nation. A wind that will blow. A wind that will blow as never has blown on this country. Hear what it is. He is inducing motion. Listen to this. Increasing expression by act in act. Listen. Increasing e expression by inactivating a negative control system. And activating a positive control system. But he needs a negative control system to activate a positive control system. God, oh, this is getting terrible, Kim. What are you telling us? Happens. You better live with it. It happens. You're going to have all kinds of crap happen in your life. Excuse me. All kinds of situations. And I want to tell you this. You can run away from it. And you can say, I'm a dirty sinner. I'm never going to make it. But I want to tell you something. That negative operating system is there so God can activate a positive operating system with inside of you. I'm not saying... That sin is right. I'm saying to you, when something happens and it activates your negative operating system, it's time for the activation of a positive system that exists inside of you that God can bring back to life inside of you. Come on! Somebody say hallelujah!
think about it for a minute. Your need activates his deed. So when you're in a, you're under this negative operation or the system that operates negatively, he starts advancing towards you. So come on now, surely when I praise him, he advances. Absolutely. He loves it. He unites with you. But Adam and Eve are in a negative operating system. And he's, he's forcing his way towards them. I want you to take a little different take on what's taking place in this nation. And stop saying, oh, there's so much sin and God's going to judge us. I'll tell you what's happening. I hear the sound of God that he's advancing. He is advancing towards you and I. So he can inactivate a negative operating system and activate a positive operating system. That's what he's doing. Hallelujah. I just want to take a quick moment, and I won't take too long, but I just wanted to interject here and thank all of you for supporting Prophetic Rewind. You have no idea how much it helps me with continuing the legacy of my father. Because as many of you know, his prophecies are still coming to pass. And what God did in my father was not confined to one human life. It was what God was doing. And that's why Prophetic Rewind is so important. Because there are vital and essential things for the body of Christ that could only come from a true prophet of God. And that's what Prophetic Rewind is all about. And so when you support Prophetic Rewind, you are supporting me continuing that legacy, not only of my father, but what God was doing through my father. And that's gonna help me do so many things. There are albums, books of his prophecies, and so many, so many other things that I'm working on. And when you support Prophetic Rewind, when you give an offering to that, you are still giving to the prophet and to what God was doing through him. So I won't take any more of your time because we're gonna go right back in there. But thank you again, and let's go. I taught my students that the word absurd means out of tune. Now I'm not talking about the negative absurd, I'm talking about the God absurd. Who are you in tune with? Yes, you are preposterous when you're in, when you're in tune with the kingdom because the world doesn't see that as in tune, they see that as out of tune. The most of the time, whatever God did was inappropriate. You think about it for a minute. He decides and, and shocks the ruling angelic kingdom and the citizens of heaven by pulling a piece of dust from the earth and making a man. The least thing that they expected. They looked at that ugly old planet that was void of anything and he pulls some dust <sighs> and there's his man absurd or really is it well it's a little inappropriate a little uncultured look at our human body what we have to go through he loves it it's all exciting you can either look at it from the negative or the positive system the negative operating system says life sucks. It says I don't like what's happening. And the positive operating system says I'm going to make something happen out of this. In this world, I'm going to do something. And I'm going to prove to you in the next five or ten minutes at the most. Because I want us to, to activate the positive operating system that God is speaking to. See, he doesn't speak to the negative operating system. He inactivates it by speaking to your positive operating system. So he doesn't come and say, you stupid jerk, look what you just did. Increasing your negative metabolism. What he does is he speaks to the Israel in the Jacob. He doesn't call him a liar, doesn't call him a deceiver, doesn't call him a supplanter. He says, great man, nations are yours, you're going to be a ruler. 
And what happens is there is an inactivation of his negative operating system and an activation of his positive operating system. And he wakes up Jacob and he says, Oh, how awesome is this place? He says, God is in this place and I didn't even know it. He said, I want to, I want to build, I want to build an altar here. I'm going to call this place. But what in God's name happened to you, Jacob? You were as miserable as hell the night you went to sleep and you wake up after God activates your positive operating system and you speaking life and prophesying to your earth and to your soil and you calling this place the house of God. Hello! How many of you want an activation of your positive operating system? That's all God's going to speak to you. Come on! Aren't these boys doing a great job, yeah? Feels like a party, doesn't it? And God feels at home. That's the best part of it. You know, Jacob wakes up out of God speaking from heaven, open heaven, by the way. What created the open heaven? A need. Without the need, that won't get happen. Please hear me out. It's a great message for you. There's a need. Your negative starts working. <laughs> and God comes and he says, you're a great nation. You're a very wealthy man. You're going to affect north, south, east, and west. Out of you is going to come a whole nation. He wakes up. J Jacob comes out of him and says, God was in this place and I didn't know it. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. I'm going to build a, a, a pillar and, and sacrifice him. I'm going to give you 10% of everything I earn. Oops. Why? A positive operating system inside of you wants to be activated. And that force called the sound of God comes advancing to you. Speed of light. Hello? <coughs> and you start saying it. I, I, I'm going to pay you 10% of everything that I earn. Where did that come from? God didn't say that. His operating system is positive. He's not thinking fear. He's not thinking doldrums. He's not thinking negative. That's been inactivated. That's what prophecy is. It's the activation of the destiny that's inside of you so it can give destiny a voice. Your destiny has to have a voice. Your vision has to have a voice. And God does that. And that's the powerful thing. Jacob starts saying all this stuff why? Because it's, the negative is gone. No, but I don't have any money on it. He doesn't even think of that. He wants to sow into what he's just heard. It's absurd. Oh, yes, it's absurd for God to send manna from the sky to feed three and a half million people. But he does. It's absurd for God to speak through a donkey. But he does. It's absurd. For God to bring 155,000 gallons of water out of a rock per day by just Moses striking it. It is preposterous. It is preposterous for him to cause them to, over, to, to overcome entire armies with 300 men. America has felt this. To show up, it's preposterous. It is absurd. For God to show up in a fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But he does. Why? A need. A need. A need causes him to show a great deed. It activates the deed. How about that now? We have a need. We hear the news media broadcasting the need every day. Same old crap every day. And your negative's going, oh, yeah. And then God sends a prophet to a voice and the, 
and says, that's not the way it is. Resilience. Resiliency. God is causing it to take place, to come back, to recover speedily. But you don't know what I've lost. It doesn't matter. The deed is activating a huge de deed. And how many of you will actually get that? Oh, it's quite preposterous for God to send his only son through a virgin birth. It's absurd for him to spit on the ground and create two eyeballs and shove them into a man's eyes. But he does. What's happened to us that we're afraid to be slightly preposterous and say, you know what? It's actually not quite that absurd. It's his earth. Elisha says there's a pot full of stew that's poisoning the sons of the prophets. He doesn't have 911. So he's, he, he sees flour, flour, and throws it into the pot. It's a brand new invention. And, they, and, they, and, and the poison is taken out of the pot. Do you believe that the poison in your pot is going to be removed by a simple act of a prophetic or a prophetic action? You think about that for a minute. But that's absurd. I know. It's crazy. Some of the things that I prophesied are absurd, but now they're starting to happen. For years I was called absurd. In fact, I think that's my name. Absurd? Hello, here I am. Yeah. that's absurd I heard that five years ago now they're praising me you know and it's the, ma the thing about it is to live and understand that God that's the nature of God now what is the nature of God absurdity no it's actually the right way up we just we got it the wrong way around it's 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 so incredible your need activates the deed have you heard of a minor prophet his name is Nahum well, you look at Nahum chapter 1 verse 3b, and this is what it says. The Lord has His way in the whirlwind. The Lord has His way in the storm. Doesn't that change it slightly for you? There's a storm. Yes, where Jesus is. Right there on the water, walking towards them. Oh, it's a ghost! It's a ghost! And guess what Jesus does? He almost misses them and walks by. by because he's hearing all the stuff. And then one guy says, it's the Lord. And jumps out in the water with him. What I'm trying to say is, all the stuff about everything's going wrong, you don't understand. There's a force coming towards you. I want everybody to say this, and then we're going to move into it. I want you to say suddenly. suddenly. You see, God has so many suddenlies in the Bible because of the impulse. It's called the unaccountable impulse. It is, it's, a, it's, it's a thing that we cannot get away from. It's something that happens all the time. You, you, you don't expect that. Suddenly it happens. That's what God does. And, and you've been praying for, four, for 40 days and fasting for three weeks or whatever, and nothing happens. It doesn't matter because suddenly it's going to happen. The Bible says as Elijah and Elisha were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared. It wasn't as if they were expecting it. Abraham is sitting outside of his tent. He's bathing in the sun. Suddenly, three men appear. One of them is God. And they began to talk to him about Sarah having a child and the nation being born. Moses is walking and suddenly there's a burning bush that appears to him. In Numbers chapter 16 verse 42, but when the assembly gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron, suddenly the cloud covered it and the glory of God appeared. Have you noticed that God would come every time there was a need and a suddenly would take place? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Saying because tonight there is a suddenly spirit that is in this building and listen to me right now. Because God is watching the need and he says, you don't realize it. I'm about to embark upon you suddenly and suddenly this will begin to take place. Suddenly as the need grew and they begin to stand in opposition to Moses and Aaron suddenly the cloud covered it and the glory of God appeared Bel Bel
Belshazzar is his real name, the king of Babylon, took the golden vessels from the temple. What he did was a disgusting act of a Babylonian king taking the, the vessels of gold and silver out of the temple and he poured drink into it and started drinking and suddenly the fingers appeared. Mene, mene, tekele You understand? It's a need. Okay, in that case it was judgment. But guess what happened? Daniel is honored. Daniel's sitting in there thinking, what am I going to do? Things are going wrong. It doesn't seem like everything's going very well. Daniel, you are summoned to King Belshazzar. What does he, what does he want? He, he's killed so many of, of the young people from Judah, the, 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 the captives of Judah. So just come, Daniel. Suddenly, there's, there's, a, there's a whole sentence on the wall. And, and they said, if you can tell me what this means, this is what I'm going to do for you. He says, your days are numbered. And he goes through the whole thing and tells the king, basically, you, you're over, you're dead. And Daniel gets honored. Daniel is honored. Suddenly, Daniel's status changes. Even though one may die, the other one is raised up. I think you understand what I'm saying. The Bible says, suddenly, after the resurrection, Jesus met them and he said, greetings. And they grabbed his feet and worshipped him. Suddenly he was there. Do you expect a suddenly tonight? I said, do you expect a suddenly tonight? Do you expect an un unaccountable impulse to take place tonight so that God can appear at a time you least expect him? I want you to know something. He's about to appear in the United States of America and suddenly there will be the sound of a mighty rushing wind and the sound will fill the whole house where they are praying and they will begin to express themselves under the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say yes! happened to us why don't we expect anymore Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch and suddenly the spirit of the Lord took Philip away to another place Paul on the road to Damascus suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around him and a voice spoke suddenly suddenly is about to happen yes. to you You know what I love about the prophetic is you get so close to the heart of God. You hear his mind, his thoughts, what he plans to do. You know, you need this on a regular basis. And there are millions of viewers all over the world that experience this twice a week, sometimes even more, at my den. And you can experience it as well. I would love to have you there. All you've got to do is go to kim.tv. We have so much. We have worship, we have songs that come from the heart of God, prophetic words about things that have not happened yet. That's what we, we say to the people, welcome to the future. And I want you to experience that. I look forward to seeing you there.